So I'm here with Mike Post, my man Mike Post. And what studio do you work uh, at? Moose Cat Recording in Los Angeles. So definitely check him out. Mike brought an incredible mic. <laughs> the C24, the AKG C24. And last night I built uh, JML12, we'll call it. Uh, it's like the C12, but essentially uh, it has an Elam 251 circuit. And I modified the power supply so it's way quieter. And we're going to compare these two because one of them is worth say 30 grand and the other one's you know about 1200 bucks and um uh, i want another shout out to yuki over at berkeley college in california who is using two of these mics i built the jml12 um he's using them on everything from absolute vodka commercials uh, to japanese uh, government parades and a whole bunch of international projects so we're gonna see if uh we're gonna see which ones are better and spoiler alert it's probably the c24 <laughs> <laughs> Angels, angels are calling you to me, oh. Angels, angels are calling you to me, oh. Falling flowers are falling down around your feet, falling down around your feet. Alright, what do you think? I know, uh, at first, you're, you assume a $30,000 mic is going to be better than the knockoff. And then you hear some things you really like about that C12 clone that I built. I was just talking to Mike, we're about two weeks after the trade went down. And it was a trade, by the way. Look what I got! So, I traded him, you know, roughly 30 grand oh, worth of gear and some cash for this. And uh, it's definitely the nicest mic I've owned and I've had some vintage U67s and a C8000, but um, you know, the Manly Reference, the C12 VR, uh, the Tube, they were so underwhelming after a U67 and I've been looking for something like a U67 ever since and I haven't found it until I found this. And obviously this doesn't sound like a U67, but it has that presence in that 3D soundstage that I'm looking for, where I feel when I'm listening back to it, like I'm in the room with the source. And I talked to Mike recently and he was going on and on about the JML12 and how good that microphone is. He's shot, it's, you know, it's basically a hand-built clone and it really performs outstandingly it's much better than the c12 clones that are out right now and i highly recommend the microphoneparts.com modification kits that they sell for that cv12 um, i can build them for you or there's a number of techs out there that can do that for you or you can do it yourself uh, a big part of this channel is i want to encourage that so what i'm going to do now is uh since i am a tech i'm going to pull this thing apart so let's do it and vintage AKG C24. Let's pull it apart and see what's inside. The first thing I do when I get a microphone is rip it apart. I want to see what's inside and how it works. So most microphones is pretty easy. You just unscrew the lug or tighten set screws in a clockwise motion so the inside 
uh, re removes from the shaft, like so. I built this microphone, yay! Look, Ma, two hands. But when I got my C24, I had to cry on my beer a little bit because I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how to get the dang thing open. I There's three set screws at the bottom. I tightened all three of them, and it will not come out. So I went online, and nobody really uh, has much information about this. So obviously, I don't want to wreck a $30,000 mic by jabbing a bunch of screwdrivers into it. So I uh, jabbed a bunch of screwdrivers into it and popped this off the top, exposing these little screws right here. Look at these little nuts. I bet if we take these off, this will slide out. And then we can see the PCB and all the little components and see if it's been recapped or if it's had any work done to it. And take a look at the capsules and see how dirty they are. And pull out some distilled water and try not to wreck them. I was right. She blows. Oh. Oh. What the heck kind of tube is that? Well, it's an 12AT7. Look at this articulating design. Brilliant. There you have it. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna start crying. It's so gorgeous. Oh. I mean, oh, look at these little tropical fish with large capacitors. Wow. I really quickly wanted to talk about the differences between the C12 and the C24. I know that a lot of people are going to say this is an unfair review because the C24 is not like a C12. And I'd argue that that's partly true. A C24 is very much like a C12, but it's better. And there are three key differences that make it better. Firstly, this, the output coupling capacitor to the transformer on a C12 is a 0.5 and on a C24, it is a 1 UF, and that actually yields a better low-end response um, by a whole octave at negative 3 dB. So the C24 actually performs much better than a C12 in that regard. Secondly, the valve anode is decoupled to earth with a 100 PF capacitor, which uh, improves the extreme top end greatly. In fact, um, it has a much smoother response for that reason, the C24 does, over the C12. And thirdly, the C24 versus the C12 power supply, it's called the N24 and the N12, respectively. And the N24 power supply has better grid biasing because it's actually self-biasing. It has better low-end characteristics, um, it has better transfer characteristics, it yields a quieter and smoother microphone all around. So yeah, the C24 and the C12 are not exactly the same. I've gone over this and over this on internet forums before, and I've spoken about this exact thing, because the C24 is, is a better designed microphone than a C12. Unfortunately, between the MK1 and the MK2, um, there's only about 800 of them ever even made. I call it the C24 800 Club. If you own one, you are a member because there are not a lot of them. So, uh, a C12, fantastic microphone. C12 VR, not so much. I've owned two and both of them were kind of trash. Isn't it incredible that all these manufacturers of old gear just can't get it right? I don't understand why old is better than new. They're, you know, vintage versus modern, it's kind of this age old battle. You'd think a manufacturer now, knowing that they had all this prestige and they had created a legacy for themselves, that they would remake the gear and it would be wonderful. But unfortunately, a lot of the modern gear that's coming out right now doesn't hold a candle to the vintage stuff. And we're talking, when you talk about vintage gear, you're talking about failing capacitors and like dirty capsules with bad mylar and old cloth wiring and I, I just and point-to-point -point hand built construction which is not a good thing I don't know why people are so obsessed with hand built personally I'd rather have something that's machine built within a very tight specification um, than someone who may have been up drinking on a Friday night and came into work on Saturday to build my piece of gear there's too many variables when something's hand built you know unless it's built by a true master craftsman which I guess if we're going back to old world craftsmanship 
Stuff used to be built by hand, and it was incredible. The variance is very small when something's built by a machine these days. Uh, as where if it's built by a human, the variance is huge to be out of spec. I look at some of these Manly reference microphones and some of the gear Manly makes, and they don't even clean the flux, solder flux, off of the PCB. Open a Manly reference microphone and really look at the PCB. It's covered in nasty flux. It's, it's really bad, and those are hand-built. Uh, and then you look at a nice, really modern that's built by a machine, and you'll notice that it's extremely clean. There's nothing wrong with machine built. Something about the way things were hand built in the 50s and 60s and 70s uh, is still holy grail to this day and it's as if manufacturers just can't replicate that magic. I think a perfect example of this is the KM84 versus the KM184. What a difference and why? Why is it so difficult? If you compare like a Juno 106 to a Juno DS. What a massive night and day difference. If you pull up the exact same patch, it's not a small difference. It is night and day. And that to me is insane. Even the new Juno X, which is, you know, uses their highest quality modeling software, to me there's still a big difference. And a lot of people would agree with me there. And I don't understand why manufacturers just can't replicate the magic of the past. It boggles the mind. So that's it, like and subscribe, hit the little bell notification so you're notified when I make these. Please check out my Instagram as well. You can check out jmlrecordingstudios.com for booking and any other information. I just want to encourage you all to be nice to each other, love one another, take care of one another. That's it, let's make another video.